Hey folks, um, Josh here. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna be creating a mother mold for my Chewbacca sculpt. Um, that was a digital sculpt uh, that I did it in ZBrush. Um, but we're gonna be creating a mother mold in this video. It's probably gonna be a long video. It may be several parts, but we'll see how it goes. Um, in this just first part here, what I wanna do is just kinda talk about like the goal of this. Um, and so, like I said, this, the goal of this video is gonna to be to create the mother mold. Right here, I have my Tarful mother mold. Um, you can see the inside of it. So you can see that's the mother mold portion of it. And then it has a plug that I'll be doing in another video. Um, but basically, we're gonna be creating one of these for my Chewy Sculpt. Now, that I've already had uh, several Chewy Sculpt, well, maybe not several, but I, I did a version one that I did a couple years back. Then it, Kind of led to a version two and then this is that v3 chewy mask which i've already molded one time um the reason why i'm having to mold it again is because uh i'm still learning how to do this and um through my molding um my time learning how to mold uh i've learned a thing here too and my molds have failed. My molds were pretty bad to start with, at least looking back, they were pretty bad. And then they've gotten better as I've learned some new skills. About, I think about 18 months ago or so, I um, signed up for the Stan Winston monthly thing and I watched some fantastic videos there. And I thought, you know, when I do my next mold for Chewy, I wanted to make a video showing how I do it. Um, which in a lot of ways, I'm just taking a lot of stuff from the Stan Winston, uh, what I learned from the Stan Winston video. So I will, al I'm, I will always go and refer people to that video. But my, my intention here with this video is to try and create something that people can go watch the Stan Winston stuff, which is amazing and very, very thorough. And then they can come back and they can watch mine and then whatever I miss in my sort of tutorial or run through of how I mold, um, they can kind of just see the similarities between what I'm doing here and the Stan Winston stuff and see what I extracted from them. Because I don't do every single thing that I learned in the Stan Winston uh, molding and silicone mask videos, which are super awesome. <laughs> like, they taught me a lot. Um, uh, so yeah, what I'm doing here is I'm going to be molding Chewbacca. Um, this is an example one of what we'll, we'll be shooting for. I'll be creating basically one of these um, with the plug, maybe in a later video, for the Chewy. Now, uh, the Chewy sculpt, it started, like I mentioned, it started in ZBrush as a 3D, and then it, and, and then it came out in a, a 3D print. So this, is, um, this was printed by uh, Ken Jones, a friend of mine. Um, thank you, Ken. Um, and he's printed me, uh, he printed me this and then put, you know, put a finish on it to smooth it over and everything. Um, for some reason, I had tried doing Chewy, the version one, version two in clay, and I was liking what I was doing. But then for some reason, when I tried it in ZBrush, like something just clicked um, and it really worked for me. And I ended up being really happy with this version three. So again, this is the 3D print of that mask um, that, I, that I've been sort of putting out. I'm getting ready to do a kit run. And uh, I need to mold it again because the last time I molded it, um, there was a little part of the mouth that broke in the mold uh, when I was pulling out an underskull. And so now I've kind of I have to obviously remold it, and I've sort of devised a way to to avoid that from happening. Some of it is what I learned from the Stan Winston school, and some of it is just me coming to my senses after do doing enough trial and error over a couple of years now. But it started as a 3D print, so. Um, what I'm not going to be molding the 3D print. I'm going to be molding this, but in a clay version, which I'll show you here in a second. But that's what happened is, is uh, that's how this came to be, is I, I sculpted this in ZBrush uh, software. And then what I did was I molded this. And I did what's called a junk mold on top of this. And I'll show you that right now. <clears throat> so this is the junk mold that was that, that is of that 3D print that I was just holding. And, and this, essentially, this is just a product called Rebound 25, and I basically just rebound molded it. Now, it's called a junk mold because, uh, well, honestly, I don't exactly know why they call them junk molds. To me, it's not junk, <laughs> but um, uh, this was meant to create something for two reasons, really. Um, first and foremost, I make a mold of that 3D print, like I had just shown you, and then what I do is I just fill this up with clay to, to create my clay cast of the 3d print 
And then that having that clay allows me to have something that is malleable that I can put a mother mold on top of and then ha have a way to pull that out of the mold so that I can use the mold. But this, this is how it started. It started with 3D print and then I mold it with the quote unquote, the junk mold. Now I will be using this later on to create underskulls, but I'm gonna get into that later on. Um, the mother mold I'll just be using to create the silicone outer face skin that you see on those Chewbacca masks. Um, and so, um, but that's the process, 3D print to clay cast. Uh, and I do that by making one of these. All right. Um, and then I'll show you now, I'll show you the, the clay cast of it. So again, I just filled up that, that junk mold with monster clay and created this, which is, this is solid clay. Um, this is a solid piece of clay and it's pretty heavy. Um, but this is what I'm going to be mother molding today. Um, but you can just see it kind of a look at it there. And so I'm going to start off this video by going over some of the materials that I'm going to be using during this. Um, and, and I want to, I want to mention too, uh, very important, like don't, don't watch this video and think, oh, this is like the way to do it. I am just a guy in the garage. Um, I have, I watched some Stan Winston videos and I kind of went to the quote unquote, the YouTube university and watched videos and tried to learn what I could. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't, uh, profess to be like the guru of this. I've just learned a couple of things that seem to be working and that I'm really happy with them. And I learned them through a lot of trial and error and a lot of spending money on materials that I, you know, looking back, I probably wouldn't need to spend so much because, um, you know, it's just kind of how it is like hindsight being 2020. So what I got is I got a list of notes that I took when I was watching the Stan Winston video and I put those into practice now through three or four molds and uh, really paid off. So I can't recommend the Stan Winston videos enough. They're incredible. So I would definitely check those out. And I don't work for Stan Winston. I don't know that I've ever even met anybody that did or anything, but uh, their videos were just super informative and super helpful, uh, nice and lengthy. And like, I don't know, I was able to keep up with them really well. I've watched the videos on how to um, mold their silicone masks many like probably five or six times and just like gone through my notes and everything uh so yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna stop this video and i'm gonna start another video talking about some of the materials that i'm going to be using um, during my mother mold process which some of which are the same materials that the stan winston uses some of them um some of the steps they use i'm skipping because i just don't think i need to and i'll hopefully talk a little bit more about that later on as i'm making this video Anyway, I appreciate you guys tuning in. This is going to be probably a long video, but if you're interested in molding, I'm, my goal, my, I'm shooting for uh, making it a really, really good example of how to do this. Um, but again, I don't know that it'll be comprehensive. We'll kind of see when all is said and done how comprehensive it is. Okay, uh, talking about materials I'm going to be using in this video. Um, so again, mother molding chewy, um, and it requires a lot of materials. Um, I think there's probably a couple hundred dollars worth of materials that I use for a mother mold. Maybe not quite that much. I, I would say there's probably about $200 in materials, just if I had to guess off the top of my head. Um, having mother molded now six or seven times um, and gotten better with it each time, I feel like um, $200 would be a good budget for buying enough materials to, to do one of these, um, the, the whole entire part of it. Okay, so just some of the materials, and I'm not gonna go in any particular order here. Um, but some of the materials I'm going to be using in this process um, are rubber gloves. Going to need rubber gloves. Going to need chip brushes. I don't think you're going to need a ton of chip brushes, but you're going to need probably a dozen. I don't know at the most. You probably only need about a half dozen, but a dozen to be safe. Going to need chip brushes. Um, I'm going to be using some CA glue very quickly, and that's just going to be to work on the chip brushes so the hairs on the chip brush don't come out. Um, you're going to need cups to weigh out different kinds of fluids, you're going to need a scale, okay, food scale to weigh out your materials. Um, I'm going to need some mold, you're going to need some mold release. Um, this stuff is kind of the industry standard, is, or so I've been told. Um, uh, I'm going to be using freeform air, uh, which is basically like an epoxy dough. Uh, fantastic stuff, I've really liked it. I can't really compare it to anything else because it's all I've ever used. 
I'm gonna be using fiberglass, quite a bit of fiberglass. I'm gonna be using six ounce fiberglass and 10 ounce fiberglass. Okay, another product I'm gonna be using, and I'll be using quite a bit of this, is Epoxicote Gray. Um, they make Epoxicote Red. For some reason, the gray, I think, is a little bit easier for me to find. And they've said to me that there's no difference other than the color of the different epoxy coats. Um, but that's my understanding is that the red and the gray are basically the same product, but a different color. So um, I thought originally, I thought maybe the red was like for heat or something, but apparently not according to what I've been told by, uh, I think it was, I think I got that info from Reynolds uh, Advanced Materials. Um, I'm gonna be using Epoxamite. Uh, Epoxamite 100, okay, it comes with a, a hardener too that you mix into it, two part deal there. That's what I use on the fiberglass. Um, let's see, the, the uh, epoxy coat also comes with a hardener. I don't know if it's the same stuff, but um, you, it's a, a two part mixture. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be using, um, those, those are some of the base materials I'll be using to make the mother mold. Um, in the next video, I want to go, I'll just kind of talk about what I, my setup here, which you can see kind of part of down here. Um, but I'll kind of explain my setup and we're going to start hopefully building a, a clay wall. Uh, but I need to clear some space on my table here so that I don't run myself into a corner. Uh, a couple other things that I'm seeing just as I'm thinking out loud here, are you going to need mixing sticks? Okay, lots of these. I think that is about it. I'm sure I'm missing like five things right now, but um, I'll talk about those as I go through the video. This is gonna be one of those videos like just about all of the videos I've made where you really need to just get out a pad of paper and kind of watch and take notes maybe as you watch it because I'm not remembering every little point to talk about right in the beginning. Um, but those are some of the very, very basic starter materials that I'm gonna be using. Um, to do this, uh, there's gonna be a lot of like wait times and um, uh, waiting for things to cure to a certain point before I move on. Um, typically when I mother mold, um, it's I kind of section off an entire day for that. Uh, right now it's a, probably about one o'clock. Um, I would have liked to have started earlier, but uh, tomorrow's Saturday and so I can stay up late and do this if things are, if I'm waiting for things to cure. Um, but I like to section off really an entire day where I'm not really doing anything else because depending on the temperature of where you're working, depending on how much of the material you're using, you really could run into a situation where you maybe take less time or more time for things to cure. And we're gonna be working in such a way where we're gonna be looking for, you know, how far this, or how long, uh, sorry, how much this material has cured. Um, and that's gonna give us an indication of whether or not to move on to the next step in the process. Uh, especially with the epoxy coat, um, you know, I'll put a, a thin layer of that on and then uh, I'll end up, you know, waiting 60, 90 minutes for that to get to a point where I can put another layer of that on and then I'll kind of repeat that process three or four times. Um, but, but these are time, a lot of these materials are kind of timed. You wanna let, you know, one layer cure before you start throwing on another layer of it. Um, but that's the basic uh, basic materials list that I'm working with here. And um, in the next video, I'm gonna talk about how I've got this um, thing positioned uh, here on the table, show you kind of what I'm, what I'm working with. Um, and um, we'll start talking about the clay wall uh, in this video. All right, hopefully I'm not so missing what I you. have, uh, what I have here is, I've got my clay cast of my Chewy sitting down on top of the, some really what is about three and a half inch pieces of wood. Let's see if I can get my fingers out of the way. Um, and the reason why I have that is because I, the, the mask that I make is a full dome. I get a full dome out of it, which means that it's, I end up molding this area back here. If it was cut, if this area here was cut off, then I'd be able to lay him down flat and I wouldn't have to put this down here, but the way it is, um, I have to kind of prop him up because uh, I want to try and get this lifted up so that it can kind of just be flat pointed, have his mouth and nose uh, pointed straight up to the ceiling. Um, and so getting him positioned is really like, it, it's more or less step one of this molding process. 
Um, the first thing I think before then even is I got to make sure you know that my sculpt is cleaned up. Now I'm only going to be molding the mother mold only is the face. So there's some like areas up here that aren't clean. And uh, I'm not worried about that because I'm going to be doing a clay wall that comes up to about right here. Okay, it's going to extend all the way down and then it'll come down flat around. And there'll be a flange, a big heavy duty flange that comes all the way to here and then up around the forehead. And then it'll extend over to this other side. Okay, and then it'll kind of come down this way and sit flat around this. Um, and it'll look very much like that tarful one did that I showed earlier. Uh, but this is the positioning you can kind of see down there what I'm looking at in terms of just what what all of it looks like. Uh, so that's that's what it looks like in terms of the positioning. Okay, over here I've got an area just to to basically slice clay off, and I've got a piece of wire. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'll probably show some video of doing it, but I'll take this. Uh, water clay, uh, which I'll be using for to make the um, uh, the clay wall on this and the flange. Um, I got this. I'll get this out of the bag and I'll just sit it here and then I'll hold this wire along the edge of this cookie sheet down here and then I'll just work that through and that's how I'm going to slice my uh, clay off to try and get it in, in as, as uniform of slices as I possibly can. Uh, but that is going to be my process for doing that. I will, I'm going to try to show that how I'm doing that uh, on video as I'm making the clay wall. And then I'll try to show a video of actually constructing the clay wall. Uh, I'm thinking I probably will do like a time lapse in terms of um, building the clay wall. Um, but definitely go and check out the Stan Winston stuff because there's no time lapse there. They have nice long videos where they show you a step-by-step -step slow process of how to build the clay wall. And uh, I'm going to be doing the same thing essentially that they do, but um, I don't, you know, I don't see the need to show you, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a slow, boring process building the clay wall. But um, what I'm creating here should be a really good resource uh, as well. So yeah, uh, we'll, we'll stop video here and then we'll start working on our clay wall. All right, so because, like I mentioned, because I made the mistake of cutting all my wire, because I used the same wire for my lip mechanisms, and, I'm, and I was like prepping pieces for this, I usually save a longer piece of wire that I can wrap around my hand uh, and use that for cutting the, um, the clay slices. Uh, but I cut them all short, and so I don't have enough to wrap around my hand. Uh, but what I did find was I found some uh, some little vice grips, and I'm just going to essentially just clamp them on the end like I've got here and uh, try to drag this along uh, this co the, co the edges of this cookie sheet, and it's going to help me cut off some slices of this. So let's see if it works. So here we go. This clay's been sitting in my shop for a while, and so uh, it's a little bit harder than I wanted it to be, but um, it worked fine. Uh, so I'm just gonna set that down, and you can see here that I get a nice clean uh, cut there at the bottom. So it's just basically as tall, it's, it's as tall as the cookie sheet is uh, in terms of the edges of the, the sides of it. And so what I'll be doing, I'm going to I'll move the video around so you can see it, but I'm going to be taking these pieces and uh, slicing off just like you saw me do there and uh, creating a nice big flange uh, wall, a big clay wall around here. So you'll see that in the video. Uh, but this is how I cut the clay to get a more uniform uh, flat flange on this. Okay. Okay, so hopefully this is a good angle for you guys to see. I know it's gonna to be tough for you to see here, and I might be able to um, show you a different angle at some point. I've already started the clay wall. I've done two slices off of that big block, and I've basically just situated those right along like where the sort of the ear line, the top of the ear line is. Um, I've got a little bit of a space here that I'll have to fill in when I do the flange around the bottom of the jaw, but I'm just working my way up over over the brow here, 
Um, and I've got essentially a line. I'll probably, I'm gonna have to move it up a little bit, I think. So I'm gonna take this, this piece and move it up to about there. Cause I want that, my, some of my lines disappeared, but I want my clay wall to come right about to this spot here. You can see little, little snippets of that, of that line that are sitting there. So I'm just kind of smashing this clay that I've cut. And I've got this little space back here, but that's fine. It'll get filled in when I do this flange along the jaw. I'm gonna cut off some more clay. And I'll situate a couple of these, and then probably what I'm gonna do is switch over to the um, time-lapse video, so you guys can see this happening a little bit more quickly. This piece kind of looks like it fits in this area, so I'm just gonna, gonna just put it in there. I'm not really sure if I have enough water clay here because of this huge flange that I'm doing. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the flange shorter now, so I'll get more, more clay that way. So I'll be cutting off some material off of the edge of this. So, but for right now, I just wanna get the, the basic layout and form of this flange. And I'm pretty confident that I'll have enough clay when all is said and done. I may have to get creative with it, we'll see. But, so this piece is a little bit different. Because I want my flange to be probably like, I'm shooting for like a three inch flange. Probably two and a half to three inch. So that's looking pretty good, at least for a basic layout so far. Now this one, my base, is kind of short, so if I were to just set this here, it's just going to fall off like so. I'm not sure if you can, no, you guys can't see that very well. Let me see if I can move the camera. So this edge here, not, like, if I were to set this here, it's just going to fall off. So what I need to do is I need to cut this piece right about here, um, and then, uh, and then I'll be able to set something down there. It's a pretty high-tech device that I'm using for cutting this clay. Um, I just used a ruler. So uh, make sure you pick up a, a ruler. So I'm just pushing this into, into place. Just trying to, there, there are some spaces that'll need to be filled in and I'll get to those. Uh, but for right now, I'm just trying to fill in the, the large portions of this. Okay. So I just cut that last piece in half. Now I need to kind of put a piece right in here. So what I'm gonna do is cut about there. And that should be good. I should be able to just kind of push the other stuff in place. So again, I just got a kind of a, a block here and I can kind of play around with how I wanna do this. Probably should have cut it a little bit differently than that, but I can make it work. It'll, it'll push into place. And there'll be a lot of smoothing taking place in this too. I'll probably get, get, get to most of that on the thing. I'm just gonna cut this off here because that's about where I want the edge to be. Okay, I'll do more cutting on the edge as I go along here, but uh, for right now, I'm just, like I said, just trying to kind of fill in these larger gaps. This one almost fits perfectly in there, so that's kind of ideal. So I'm just gonna give it one of these with my awesome slicing device. 
also known as a ruler. But that'll, that's good there, that'll fill in right there. And this edge is a little short here, so I'll use that piece that I had just cut, cut off to just kind of pack it on there and then I'll smooth it out a little bit later. And some of this stuff on the edge is kind of wanting to droop a little bit. So what I'm going to have to do is kind of go in and just sort of pack underneath it just so that it's not falling down. But that's the basic gist of it. Now, I, I do need to still go do the, the brow here. Uh, but I'm going to put this thing on time lapse. And you guys can kind of see how that is. And then I'll try to show another angle. And when I get this clay wall done, uh, at least the, the basic buildup of it, um, I'll show you guys that before I smooth it out. So here's another view of what I have to this point. You can see there's some areas there and I haven't done any, really any smoothing at all. Uh, but I got to finish this section up here, uh, right up here on this brow. So I'm going to get that clay wall going up over there. And then once I get all that on, I'll start doing some smoothing and then we can talk registry points and uh, pry points. So this is the basic layout um, of my clay wall. You can see what portion of the Chewy sculpt is exposed. Um, there's a couple times where I kind of knocked it, so I might have to go in and just clean up. There's also a color to other spots where maybe just some of this dry water clay um, got uh, some got on there, and then it dries up and it sort of creates a little bit of a dust right there. So I need to clean it up, and I'll be doing that before I do any molding. But this is the basic layout of the clay wall. Uh, now the next step is I want my I want my clay wall to be about this tall, this tall, or maybe perhaps a little bit taller. Like I might kind of add a little little wedge right in here, um, just to because I want it to be about this tall right here, which is about I'm guessing it's about two and a half inches. But let's put a ruler on it. It looks like it's about two and three quarter inches tall. So I'm shooting for that two and three quarter, three inch wall all the way around this thing. Um, so what that means, if I pull the video back here, is that we're way too wide over here and all the way around this jaw really, it's way too wide. This down here at the very bottom is probably about perfect. Um, but I'm gonna cut off all of that extra clay and try to get a flange around the edge of this whole space that's about three inches. Um, and so that'll be the next step. So I'm going to basically just use my ruler. I'm going to measure out about three inches everywhere, all the way around. And then um, I've got to go a little longer there. And I'll do the same thing all the way around. And then I'm just going to cut off the excess edge clay um, as I do that. Okay, so I'll come back with a video showing that, um, that process. basic form of my clay wall set up. I'm essentially three inches around all the way around this flange. Um, there's a couple spots where I had to go back. You may have seen them. It probably went by really fast in the time, uh, time lapse. So I'll show you here. Um, I didn't want this just being, uh, you know, sort of a, you know, thin wall here. So what I did was I just took some of that stuff that I cut off and I just sort of wedged it in here to sort of make it, um, you know, so that it could hold this wall nice and firm. I don't want that drooping or changing position uh, after I get any of my molding materials on there. But essentially three, third, uh, sorry, three inches all the way around, uh, give or take maybe a quarter inch in some spots. Um, and this is basically step one of, the, of building up that clay wall. Um, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and start doing some smoothing. Um, and then I'm gonna work, once I get it smoothed out, I'll show you a video of that, and then we'll make some registry points and um, pry points as well. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just working on doing some smoothing. I've got a little thing of water here. And I'm just kind of 
trying to smooth in some of these cracks when you when you put water on this you just literally put a little tiny bit and it it has a tendency to create kind of a kind of a muddy sludge you really don't need a lot of water and it, it'll just fill in those cracks now if it's a big crack you may have to add some add some clay but I'm just trying to get this as smooth as I can just with my hand so I'm just kind of working some of the bumps down this is going to go through a, a lengthy process of smoothing um, this is it's really nice to get it very smooth because it pays off later when you're trying to pull stuff out of it I'm trying as hard as I can not to jab my fingers into the sculpt uh, but I, I will, the last step before I start molding is I'll go in and I'll do any cleanup that I need to do on the sculpt. The nice part about doing a chewy this way is uh, all of this gets covered up by hair. So as long as I don't like mess up the nose or the lips or something that's going to be visible skin, then, you know, I should be fine. I could jab it and take a big piece of clay out of here and it gets covered up with hair in the end product anyway. So it's really not a huge, huge thing. Although I do try to get it looking nice just because it's for my own. Just, I like it looking looking as pretty as I can get it. Just kind of filling in some of those grooves where I added on like a little connector piece of clay here. And I'm just kind of gently just sort of working the clay together, trying to get all the seam lines to disappear. Trying not to force the clay. I'm trying to just allow that little slurry that gets created from the water. I'm trying to just allow that to sort of fill the cracks in when I can. Just kind of use water at my discretion. If there's an area that is like really bumpy and I need to go in I might grab a sculpting tool and just kind of even it out there's a seam right here that you can see that I'm I may have to add some clay in that spot and then this little area right here I'm gonna have to kind of work work that into there it doesn't need to be perfect um, at least on my end it doesn't need to be perfect Anyway, it's shaping up pretty good. I need to kind of taper these corners here. I don't want it to be, I want it to, to kind of work smoothly up this way. These these little divots, corners in there. I don't know what to call those. Um, I have uh, some other tools that I use for this, but the step one for me is just to, just using my hands, trying to get it to a general general shape that I like. Uh, but the next step is going to be come in here probably with a sponge. Just kind of a very lightly damped sponge. And I'm going to essentially do the same thing I'm doing now, but with the sponge. And then it'll get a whole nother level of smooth. Uh, and then if there's still areas after that that I need to close up or clean, uh, clean up, smooth out, whatever you want to call it, um, and I have like some little silicone brushes that I'll, I'll show you if I end up having to use them. Uh, but this is looking pretty good. You can kind of see it's just getting generally a little bit smoother working on this. Over the, this is it takes me a couple of hours probably to get this um, clay wall built to the point where I feel like I can mold this, uh, and then I'll let it set up for a little bit, maybe forty five minutes, just kind of let it dry out and solidify on it, and then um, then I'll come in and start working on the mold. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, now I'm going to go to damp sponge and come back.
Okay, so I've got it pretty smoothed out now. I went and grabbed some just foam that I had and uh, cut off a little piece of it. I'm gonna go through and just see if I can smooth it out with this. This might be a little bit too coarse for, I might be doing the same thing that I was just doing, but it's not gonna hurt it just to go over it. Now, I do need to make the registry points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do four of those. I'm gonna put two here, I'm gonna put two up here. So I'm gonna probably do those right now. So you can see what I've created here. And it'll, and it'll need to be smoothed out, but I'm gonna use this to create my pry point and my and a register a registry and a pry point i'm just making sure there's no negative spaces on it because i don't want anything grabbing i can also clean these up later after i've actually molded just to make sure there's no negative spaces on here uh, and that'll weld down pretty good i'll go over that and smooth it out but i'm going to do three more of those Um, that being said, sure is nice when they look, when they look good. So I'm going to try to make them about the same size. And again, I got to go over these with water and smooth them all out. But right now I'm just trying to get them stuck on there. Boy, that's the cleanest one of all four. I'm glad I did it. <laughs> Probably should go back and. Right about there. So I've got about three quarters of an inch to an inch between each registry point and, and the actual sculpture. So there'll be enough for a seal. Um, Okay, so I've got the clay wall built. I've got the registry pry points down. Um, you can see there's some cleanup I still have to do on the sculpt. I gotta, you know, wipe off some of this um, clay that's gotten on here. But it's pretty wet right now. Um, it's not so wet that it's falling apart, but it's pretty wet. So what I need to do is let it sit for a little bit and let it kind of stiffen up and then come back at it when it's stiff and I need to there's a couple you can see like up here there's a couple little spots that are kind of tough to get into so I need I need to do some smoothing in there I'll probably just use my finger to do those um, and then after I mold this what I'll probably do is come through and 
just any little blemish areas, I'll just sand them out. But this is looking really good. Um, and this is essentially what my clay wall looks looks like. So I'll come in, I'm gonna probably give it about 25, 30 minutes. Sit here, get a cup of coffee, and uh, when it starts really stiffening up a little bit, I'm gonna come in for a final sweep to make sure everything is smoothed out. And then from there, uh, I can start the next step. Okay, so I'm still uh, letting this dry. I've been waiting on it for about an hour. Um, it's got kind of a pretty thick um, butter on it, and there's a little bit of stuff I need to clean off, but all in all, it's ready to go. Uh, the sculpt itself, um, I'm really just making sure that the mouth, the areas of skin that ultimately don't get covered in hair have to be, you know, perfect and clean and everything. Um, and so really on Chewy, that's just the nose and the lips really. Um, imperfections almost look more natural in other spots. So there's a couple areas down here that are pretty rough. I did kind of go over them with some water clay just to fill in any divots. Um, and I'll be able to clean them up later too. Uh, as I cl clean up the mold, um, but uh, it's cleaned up enough to where I'm happy with it. Um, it it'll be totally fine when um, when all is said and done. I'm just getting ready to spray some release on it now. Um, I'm gonna probably do uh, I'll probably do two rounds of the release. Um, I'm just using this uh, this stuff here, Man uh, Release Technology Easy Release Easy Release 200. Pretty sure it's kind of the industry standard. Uh, but I'm just gonna spray one light coat on it um, now, and then um, I will come, I'll give it probably 20, 30 minutes to set. And then I'll come back, do another one, come back again. Uh, probably just two two coats of it. I don't need a ton of release, because this is monster clay anyway. It'll, I know it'll, even without release, it'll melt out of the mold. But um, just for an easier release, uh, I don't know. Give it, give it some mold release, so here we go. I'm really just hitting the, the sculpt with this. I'm not really worried about getting the water clay, and I'm really focused on the areas that are gonna be more difficult coming out of this. I'll just hit it very light on the flange. That's probably good. Okay, this has been sitting here for a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and spray a second round on it. All right, that ought to do it. I will uh, let that sit now, and then uh, once that uh, hardens up a bit, then we'll start on our uh, epoxy coat. All right, so I'm just getting ready here to start my epoxy coat process. Um, in order to do that, though, the first thing I need to do is I need to prep my brushes. So. These chip brushes, um, they have a tendency to lose hair. You know, as you're brushing with them, there's like hairs coming out. And the epoxy coat's like this, imagine like a thick, a very thick, it's like toothpaste. Um, it doesn't really drip anywhere um, unless it's really bulked up. Um, and so it has a tendency, it kind of pulls on the brush hairs. And a lot of the brush hairs will kind of pull out and embed themselves in the, in the epoxy coat. Um, if you see them, you know, you can pull them out and that might may happen. But uh, one of the things that I learned in the Stan Winston video is that you can uh, just grab some super glue. I don't think they use zap gap. They use some some other kind of super glue. And you just just at the at the base of the brush. You just basically um, you just put a line of glue. 
And it just holds those, the hairs of the brush uh, in place. So I'm just gonna do that and then just zip kick it really quick. And I'm gonna do that with about four brushes just to prep that. Um, and so, not that you need to see me do four of these, but just right at the base of the brush where the hairs start there. Anyway, so I'm just prepping these. I'm going to do four of them like this, and then that's, I think that's all I'm going to need for the whole epoxy coat process. Uh, but I'll go ahead and stop the video. I'm going to do it with two more of them. I've got two done, so. All right, so I've got uh, epoxy coat here. Can I give you a look at what it looks like in the cup? It's pretty thick. It's kind of toothpastey. When you put the part B in there, it kind of loosens up a little bit. But um, the way you put this on here is you're supposed to kind of drizzle it on. You don't necessarily have to, but that's the way they do it in the Stan Winston stuff videos. Um, so that's the way I like to do it, just because it, it doesn't move around super easy. So um, the very first coat I want to put on really light. You know, uh, when, when all is said and done, the epoxy coat layer is uh, a pretty thin layer. It's uh, supposed to be about a quarter inch, I believe. And um, I'm going to do about probably four rounds of epoxy coat. Kind of, kind of gauge it as I go, but I'm planning on three to four rounds. Um, this is what's known as a gel coat. And I think what that means is that it's really just designed to capture detail. Um, there's not a ton of detail, you know, on Chewy's face because it all gets covered up with hair. So, you know, the, the details on the nose obviously are important. The details on the lips and the muzzle, you know, stuff that's not covered up on hair, with hair, is um, certainly needs to be captured in detail. But um, definitely not as detailed as, you know, a, a different silicone mask might be. Certainly not as detailed as the one that the, uh, the Stan Winston uses in their video. So that's it. That's the first batch. I poured 100 milliliters of Part A and 15 because it's uh, 100 to 15. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to gently start spreading this out. I'm just creating a layer here. I had to wait a lot longer than I thought I was going to wait to, for this um, clay wall to sort of solidify. Uh, I don't know, maybe I did it different the last time, but um, as far as I know, I wasn't doing anything different. And it was, it was still... Uh, just taking a long time to set up and I, I didn't want to put <clears throat> the epoxy coat down on on like a really really wet surface um, as I'm spreading the epoxy coat what I want to be careful of is I just don't want it pooling and getting like areas that are really thick um, the reason being for that is because as the epoxy coat cures it it's exothermic so it heats up and air bubbles can happen as it's heating up so as i put this layer of epoxy coat on the first coat i want to put it on really thin that way if if any air bubbles are in it they're not going to be touching the immediate the immediate surface of this and messing up the the mold um, and I'll do that with each layer. I'm gonna I'm gonna be using uh, my <clears throat> putting some compressed air on it, and and the the blow dryer, the heat from the blow dryer at the same time to try and sort of heat it up a little bit. I'll show you guys that here in a little bit. But essentially, I'm just 
kind of trying to get a thin layer over this whole thing. I'm going to cover up the flange and everything. I'm having to be gentle around that clay wall because I don't want to, you know, push in it with this brush. It's, it's definitely hardened up a lot, so I'm in good shape, but there's still some parts of this clay wall that are a little bit too mal more malleable than I would like, so I'm just going to kind of gently work those areas. And this stuff takes a while to set up, so you have quite a bit of work time. Um, and again, like I said, this is a super thin layer, so... Uh, when I put the air on it and when I put the air and the heat on it, it will move it around some. So that's good. Just because I don't want to push so hard with the brush to, to have it um, mess up the clay wall at all. And I'll just kind of keep going through these areas that that are a little bit tricky to get in. I'm just going to kind of slow it. I'm trying to be gentle with the brush because if I were to use like really aggressive strokes, it might put an indent or something in my clay wall. And I know you guys have only the one angle there. I'll, I'll make sure to, after each layer of this epoxy coat, I'll make sure to give you some different angles so you can kind of see what it looks like. I can definitely be more aggressive on the monster clay, the, the actual sculpt. And it's looking like all the hairs are staying in my brush, so that's good. And seeing the occasion you want to pull out of there and you got to kind of pick it out of the out of the epoxy coat but it seems like it's staying pretty clear of this again I don't want it to pool in any areas just trying to do as thin a layer as I possibly can on this as I should say as thin and complete of a layer for this first layer because it's going to be the layer that's capturing all the detail from this And it does, it, it does at times want to separate too, especially on the areas where I have a good amount of that release. Because that release just kind of causes it to want to. But it's okay if there's a couple of pinholes here and there on the first layer. They'll get filled in on the, other, the upcoming layers. As long as the, as long as it's not pinholing a lot on the non-haired areas of the mask. It's looking pretty good. It's looking like that 100 milliliters of this is going to be just barely enough to get the kind of coverage I want to get for this very first round of epoxy coat. This is a very thin layer, but that's kind of what I want.
So getting done, about done with this first layer, what I'm doing here is just really making, trying to make really sure that I've got as good a coverage as possible. You can see kind of little brown spots poking through and that's fine. Like I said, those get covered up. Just trying to make there's not, sure there's not like huge pools. Um, Cause I'm gonna hit this with the air here in a minute. Especially in the mouth and the nose. I, I don't want pools in there yet. And it's, I've, in the past, I've had the nose has a tendency to capture air bubbles with this stuff. So I have to be really careful there. All right. So I'm going to, this is basically, can I get some left on the brush? I'll try to. And I'll test the brush. So now I'm going to hit it with the blow dryer and some compressed air. You get to kind of see how this, how this, uh, Epoxy coat reacts to that, so I've got heat going, and we're just going to kind of probably should switch hands, I guess. So you can kind of see, I've got my air compressor running right now. Um, you can kind of see it kind of wrinkles up. None of that epoxy coat flies anywhere. It just kind of resettles and thins it out and evens it out. I'm gonna do that process with each layer. Um, probably, you know, probably at least four layer, layers of epoxy coat. And each layer will get a little bit bigger with each one. Um, but I'm just looking around here as I put heat on it, I'm looking to see if there's any air bubbles. Uh, I'm looking to see if there's any air bubbles here on this. Um, but you can kind of see what that stuff does as you're hitting it with the air. Uh, but this is essentially what it's going to look like for the next couple hours because now this needs to cure. This needs to basically sit here for about an hour. And then I'm going to come back out. And when I can put my finger on it and feel tackiness, but nothing, but nothing really comes off on my finger... Then I can hit it with another coat of the epox of the epoxy coat, um, but that is essentially a process here. So, if I'm looking at you know four rounds of that, I'm looking at uh, you know a minimum of about four hours to do that, and then uh, and then I can start the fiberglassing and uh, freeform air parts of this mother mold. But right now, you know, I'm looking at it because I started this. Um, I think I started about one o'clock. Um, and I let this sit a little while. That's why I like to start this early in the morning. I would have liked to have started this much earlier, but I'm going to be up till probably, probably 1 a.m. or maybe midnight or something like that. Um, just because this process just takes a while.
So here's another look at it with um, just to kind of get get a different angle. There's a couple little spots I missed. I'm not worried about it. Um, you can see it, mostly it's it's up in these areas here because it was just a little hard to get to. Um, I'll make sure to get those areas really good on, when I do round two. You can kind of see over on that other side over there, right up in here. Um, I missed some areas in there as well. I'm just trying to make sure it's getting the face and this um, this the face portion of this um, really good on that first go around, uh, so that I can ca start capturing that detail from the face. But uh, this is good good so far. I'm happy with this uh, round two. I'll try to get any of those areas I missed. And as I'm looking at it, like I said, I'm just kind of uh, looking for any air bubbles that are happening as I'm doing this. Uh, they have a tendency to just sort of slow rise to the surface. You know, and if you get an air, air bubble in your first layer, there's something that's happening right in the nose, then, you know, you're going to have uh, a bad spot there that's going to be visible, not covered up by hair. Uh, I'm a lot less worried about areas that are not going to be covered uh, or that are going to be covered by hair, rather. But you can see down here, you know, there's some little pinholey areas i could always get a brush and go back in there's an area right there and there's a little spot in the corner but i'm just going to get those um in the next round of this and um and then i'll go with that but this is um give me a better look here with some light hopefully this is uh round one of epox epoxy coat okay round two of my epoxy coat journey Turn on my food scale here. Probably don't even need a glove for this. This time I'm gonna go, last time I went 100 milliliters, this time I'm gonna go 150 and 22. That doesn't seem right, is it? Yeah, that's right. I'm going 150 milliliters and 22. I came out, this is, it's been an hour, I came out and I'm just tapping down on it. And it's tacky, but nothing's coming off on my finger. So I'm going to put a second coat on. No. For people that have never used this material before, it um, starts off kind of stiff and then mix that part B in and it loosens up a bit. But I'm just going to go through the same process here. Um, of drizzling this material on. Okay, so I have got three coats of epoxy coat on there, and I'm kind of just getting tired of putting it on there, and three coats worked good for Tarful, so I'm just going to leave it at three coats and hope for the best. Um, next step is to mix uh, some epoxamite and just kind of just barely get the, the surface of this wet with the epoxamite. Mix it up. I only needed a little bit here. I'm using 40 milliliters of part A and 10 milliliters of part B, which is, again, the yellow stuff. And it, this is the fast, so obviously it kicks off much faster. Uh, again, exothermic. So, but I'm just going to give this a light coat, and then I'm going to put the... Uh, freeform air on this, which the freeform air I've already prepared and it's all um, mixed up and everything. I'm just going to do a light coat of the epoxamite and then get the freeform air on top of this. This is, I'm skipping a couple, of, I was wanting to show you guys more on this video, but I just 
kind of getting in a rush, so I'm kind of kind of just skipping a couple of the steps. Like I didn't, I didn't show um, the uh, mixing up the freeform air, which is kind of probably would have been helpful. Um, again, I would recommend the Stan Winston videos. You know, on that one, you'll see him using freeform air and mixing it up and. There's no time lapse or anything like that. Uh, if you watch that video before you watch my video, uh, or if you go back and watch that one, then watching this and doing this step will probably make a little bit more sense just because I didn't show the mixing up of the freeform air, which I already have ready to go. And maybe going over some of these materials and weighing them out, which is what they do again in that that Stan Winston video. So again, I'm just lathering this up with the Epoxamite. I'm using fast. I can't remember whether they use Epoxamite fast or medium in the in the Stan Winston school videos, but uh, either way, it's just you know if you're if you're doing the fast stuff, then you got to work a little faster because you because it sets up quicker. Um, anyway, that's pretty good. I only have a little bit left, but I'm just going to get the freeform air on there now. You can see there's not much left, so I'm just going to toss those out. And then the freeform air, I've already got part A and part B um, already mixed up. Um, part A and B come in, one's, one's like a dark gray and one's a white. They mix together to make a light gray epoxy putty. And so what I'm going to use is I'm going to and this is the part that will be helpful, is I'm gonna use this putty, which again is already mixed together. It takes a minute or two to kind of just do this technique here to mix it together until there's no streaks or anything in it. And then um, what I'm gonna do is kind of set it off to the side and I'm just gonna grab little chunks of it about like this. And I'm gonna start off with the nose because and I'm just, because getting fiberglass in this little tiny area of the nose is, I don't want to say impossible, but it's damn near impossible. So basically I'm just going to be packing any like little recesses with this, with this freeform air. So in other words, like trying to shape the contour of this eye socket with, um, with fiberglass is really tough so what you do is you just pack this area full of freeform air and kind of even out that area and then that allows it it makes it much easier to get the fiberglass on top of it uh, you can see this is i don't i don't know if i've ever seen franca bolito use this technique but when you watch Tom Spina's uh, video of his mask the Chewbacca mask that he made for um, Adam Savage he references he says uh, that he when he's telling Adam about the mold for that he t says um, you know that the mold was done I think he uses the phrase Frank and Polito style <laughs> so I'm guessing that uh, maybe I don't know if these products are Frank and Polito style but um, that's that's about the extent I know of that, um, so, and and I'm using I think the same in in um, Tom's mold there in that video you can see when he's talking about it you can see the freeform air is packed in this this particular area to his face because obviously there's a recess there um, where the eye socket's at and. So my molds have a very similar look because, because this is Chewy's face. So just kind of packing those eye sockets. I'm going to kind of go over this and pat this down. The freeform air takes quite a while to set, so I'm not really worried about it. I have plenty of work time. Now, other curves on this mask, um, one being the mouth, you know, I don't want to have to uh, try to get, again, I don't want to have to get fiberglass in there, so I'm going to pack that mouth uh, full of this freeform air also. 
And again, just any area that is gonna be hard to fiberglass, basically, because it's these little angles or little curves, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pack this in here. And then when I'm, uh, these areas down here are definitely gonna be difficult. So I gotta pack them too. I need to grab some more here. And some areas, you know, you pack a little more than other areas. And you just try to smooth it down. I'm gonna be putting some more epoxamite on top of this and kind of creating sort of a slurry, if you will, of of the of the dough, the uh, freeform air, and the epoxamite. And so you'll see that here in a bit. Um, but uh, you kind of get the idea here. Just trying to, I'm trying to make this thing easier to fiberglass. That's the that's the basic gist of this. A freeform air, you know, gets really hard. It gets it cures to like you know a rock hard, and it's extremely lightweight. So I think it's I don't know if they made it for molding or what, but I, don't know, I really like the freeform air. It's just. It's really cool how it's lightweight. It's cool how it mixes together. I haven't really used any like competing products, but when I used this, I don't know. I just kind of like really thought it was so neat when I first used it. And I just kind of kept going back to it. Haven't really felt the need to look for anything, anything else. I want to make sure as I'm using this that I don't, and I'm, I may have to, because I'm running out of this freeform air. You can see it gets pretty messy. Ideally, I'd like to get that freeform air over this entire um, flange. So I think what I'm going to do is go and mix up some more. In my notes, I had 350 milliliters, and I am definitely, I'm at about or I should say I had 350 milliliters of each. And this is only about half of that that I've just finished using, so. Just gonna kind of smooth this out. Just again, trying to make for smooth, easy to fiberglass curves. I'm gonna try and peel some of this off my fingers here and get, get what I can out of this. It's pretty sticky, so probably not gonna get a whole lot more off my hands. But what I am gonna do is get a new pair of gloves and mix up a little bit more of this freeform air because I gotta, I wanna, I wanna get this both the flanges loaded up with with more of this stuff. Uh, so that is the next step. All right, so I got a little bit more of this freeform here. Got about 60 grams of it now. Should be enough easily to help me finish this off. Kind of having to work a little faster than I like working here just because I didn't get it all. Normally I like to have all that freeform air mixed up. If you look in that Stan Winston video, he gets all the stuff that he needs mixed up before he has to use it. And it's kind of sitting on the table for a little while and uh, just kind of ready to go when he needs it. And I had that all set up to do that, but I didn't trust my notes because it just seemed like too much to me. So <laughs> hopefully I never have to do this again, but if I do, I'll re remember to trust my notes of 350 milliliters each of part A and part B. I think I'll be all right. Just some of this stuff, it's like, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to mess it up because you're messing up like a couple, maybe 150, 200 bucks in materials and an entire day of work. So it's not something I like throwing away, especially on the mistake that I should have already learned from. 
It wouldn't be the first time though, unfortunately. All right, so this seems like it's mixed up pretty good. The lesser amounts are a little quicker. Again, I'm just folding this in half until it's been folded so many times that it's mixed up. I don't see any streaks in it. So I'm gonna start getting it on there. This mold, this is definitely gonna be the thickest mold I've done. So I don't know, maybe I'll be, maybe I'll start approaching that, the thickness of that um, mold that Tom did for Adam's mask. We'll see. pretty good. I want to get a little bit more on the face. Just kind of want to cut down this curve up here. Just make it really easy to get fiberglass over if I can. As soon as I do this, I'm going to put this down here. Looking pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do, because I'm basically done with the getting the free form on there, the free form there. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is coat the top of this in epoxamite and kind of get it all slurried up. It's awfully sticky everywhere, so I think I'm in good shape. Okay, so I'm gonna get some new gloves on, get these off, I'm gonna mix up epoxamite. <laughs>
All right, so I've got, I've used up all my epoxamite, so even if I wanted to do more fiberglassing, I can't. Um, but I've got a lot of fiberglass on there. I don't know, there's, I think, plenty. So we'll see how, how it goes. Um, I have a feeling it'll be pretty good because um, it's only going to be for just a silicone face skin. Um, and I think it feels like more fiberglass than I've ever used. It's at least on par with um, what I've used before, especially with that 10 ounce on there. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it, but there's a crash course in the mother mold process, um, which hopefully, you know, maybe it'll help somebody, uh, especially if you watched uh, some other videos on it, you kind of have an idea, just seeing how maybe I do this, um, this particular thing. Uh, my Tarful file is out there. You could 3D print it and do this exact same thing with it. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, anyway, hope uh, this helped. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, leave comments and uh, and or suggestions or whatever whatever you got just leave it down below and appreciate you guys tuning in thanks okay so I've gone ahead and I've cleaned up the mold um, I really just didn't um, it's kind of a messy job cleaning up the mold um, and so I didn't want to take video of it I didn't have an extra set of hands to hold the video or anything but I wanted to come in and just do one little quick last video showing you guys the end result here of that, that mother mold part. Now, I still have to do the plug for the back of this. Um, and I'll explain just briefly what that what I mean by that in case you're brand new to this. But this is the mold that we just created. Um, I took about probably about five hours last night. And what I did was I flipped it over from that end, from that end product that you saw in the last video. <clears throat> and then I pulled off all that uh, water clay that was on it. And then I um, I used just a um, stick, you know, to kind of dig under it and, and peel it off. Got all that off, uh, cleaned all the water clay off as best as I could. Then I took it out to my side yard and used my uh, grinder to trim the edges on it. Uh, then I used a sander, just a, just a regular flat sander, to sand this entire area here on the front um, and then also sand down the edge just to make sure that it was um, not gonna you know be giving me fiberglass slivers or anything like that because these get handled a lot so sanding them down um, is really important everywhere that, that it's possible um, because it's fiberglass and uh, you do not want to <laughs> rake your hands across fiberglass it's uh, not an enjoyable experience um, and so this is the outside of it. Um, you can, you can see what it looks like here. Um, I've got a clean edge and all these spots. Um, and so I've, I've been handling this a lot today already. So I'll flip this over and show you, um, I melted out the, um, the clay that was in there. It took me a while to melt it out, but you can see the negative that gets created, uh, from this. Um, I always love that part of it for some reason. Uh, I just think it's really cool and it looks cool on uh, photos and stuff. But this is my uh, next Chewbacca mold. It still needs a, just a tad cleanup. When I pulled this apart, um, you can see the areas here, the um, uh, the registry points are a little bit of a different color and it's because they still have a little bit of clay kind of embedded in there. Um, the entire edge of this, the entire flange of this uh, was gray like these areas are here except I spent a couple hours last night just sanding down all this stuff one to just get that that gray off there too and then also just to to really really go in and just um, get that that flange extra extra smooth um, but this is the end result of what we created in this video um, and I still need to make the plug to go in here uh, but I right now am out of uh, uh, epoxamite. Um, so this is a face skin from the last mold that I created and I just wanted to show you and give you an idea. So normally what I would do when I'm going to create the plug, normally it's not a second mold. So I'm not going in and, um, uh, normally I don't have a face skin. Normally I go in and I line this thing with about a quarter, maybe maybe an eighth and inch, eighth inch of clay, between an eighth inch and a quarter inch of clay, um, essentially a clay mask. Um, but since I have this, this mask from my old mold, 
I wanted to show you just how it fits in here. So if you if you could imagine that this if you could imagine that this silicone face skin was actually clay, if it was not silicone and if it was a clay substance, then you could imagine that I would line this mold like so with clay. Um, it's a little bit short on the edges, so I am actually going to go in and, and fill that, just this top edge all the way around with clay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically, I'm going to essentially just repeat the process that I did on the front of this mold, the mother mold, for the plug. So I will spray it all. I'll get that clay in there on just this top lip here. And then I'm going to spray it all with release. I'm just going to quick overview. I'll spray it all with release. And then I will uh, do three or four epoxy coat layers on top of everything. I'm, I'll make sure that everything is released because I don't want any of it attaching to this existing thing. I may even use some wax in areas or something like that. I'll even spray underneath the, the skin and everything because I don't want it attaching anywhere. So then, so after I spray the release, I'll do the epoxy coat, probably three or four layers like I did on the front. And then I'll just fiber, I'll fill in with some, um, uh, some freeform air and then I'll uh, fiberglass on top of that. And then that piece will fill in this area and it will fill in every, all of the area except for uh, where the clay mask was, or in this case, a silicone mask. And then what will happen is I'll sandwich those two, the plug and the mother mold together. And then I'll, in, I'll drill, drill some holes in it and then I will inject... Uh, well, I'll drill s several holes. I'll drill a couple of registry holes. I'll, I'll drill a registry hole here, 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 and then I'll do the same thing on the top here, here, and here. Um, and then I'll bolt this together and I will inject silicone. Uh, in, I'll drill like a spout down in here in the mouth and then I inject silicone into it, let it sit for four hours, and then you pull out one of these. Um, and so that is how that process works. Um, but I wanted to, before I post this video, I wanted to make sure that I, um, uh, show you an end product of what we created. And it's also just kind of cool to look at. I don't know. I just really like the, I guess the illusion or the negative that it creates. I always thought that was really cool. But anyway, I, uh, I was going to put these two videos together, but I'm going to end up just doing a part two where I probably create the plug and a lot of it will be time-lapsed video. But anyway, I wanted to thank you guys for tuning in, and I really hope you got something out of this. At the very least, I hope it's just a supplement um, for uh, maybe watching the Stan Winston video. I'll try to find a link to that video and put it um, in down below. So uh, make sure to, to drop a like um, or a comment, and let me know if this helped you. Um, I've enjoyed making the video. Um, and I, I'm hopeful that it answers some questions. Maybe at the very least it can um, spark some interest. I know sometimes when I've watched a video, just seeing a material uh, being used, it, it kind of makes me gives me the confidence to purchase the material myself and use it um, just to kind of see how it's being used. Um, and, and always feel free to, to shoot me a PM or if you have other questions or things that I maybe didn't cover that, that you'd like to see covered in more detail, please let me know in the comments. And I uh, hope everybody has a good day and um, we'll see you next time.